What a beautiful day to be alive. Can you see the trees from where you are? Are the birds chirping and busily and happily going about their day? Do you feel the breeze and warm sunlight? Or hear the rain washing away the dirt from the streets and pavements? Or maybe you are in a part of the world where it is snowing and everything is being covered up like it's Christmas morning once again. Wow! I hope you can take a moment to appreciate Mother Nature's gifts and I am sure you will have a long list of things to be grateful for today. Hi everyone! My name is Mirma Tico Ortiz from Miriam College and welcome to our peaceful classroom. Our peaceful classroom is a dedicated space where parents, educators, and professionals come together to talk about ideas on how we may promote positivity and peace in the lives of our children and our teens. Pope Francis said, What kind of world do we want to leave to those who come after? To children who are now growing up, the question not only concerns the environment in isolation, but rather one complex crisis which is both social and environmental. In the second encyclical of Pope Francis, the Laudato Si, the encyclical encourages us to look within, to examine our lifestyle, and to ask ourselves questions like, are we consuming more than what we need? Are we contributing to the degradation of the environment and climate change? The problems of the environment are truly enormous, but the Laudato Si inspires us to return to our mission, to what God has intended for us, to care and live in harmony with His creation. If we passionately work together, we do this with love for our generation and those to come. In today's episode, we will continue our discussion from our last episode on Dancing with Nature with Ms. Sonia Mendoza, focusing on advocating for the environment as an essential part of our environmental health and well-being. Last week, Ms. Mendoza shared with us the challenges of living in the city the effects of pollution on our physical and occupational wellness. To continue with the theme of our discussion, we have with us our guest speakers, Ms. Jane Montilla and Ms. Rory Adriano. Ms. Jane is a retired manager from Tupperware Philippines, while Ms. Rory is an investment advisor. Both are members of Christian Life Community and involved with Catholic or the Global Catholic Climate for their apostolate. Ms. Jane and Ms. Rory will speak to us about their personal values and share with us various ways to be more mindful, living a more sustainable life, one with the environment in mind. Good day, everyone. Thank you for inviting us to share with you our values on the environment. Sonia's presentation reminded me of the title of a book by Father William Barry, S.J., Finding God 
in all things. The question I ask myself is, is there truth to these words? And if there is, what does it have to do with environmental wellness? This brings me to Pope Francis' encyclical Laudato Si, Care of Our Common Home. A worldwide wake-up call to help us understand the destruction that we are doing to the environment and our fellow human beings. While addressing the environment directly, the document's scope is broader in many ways as it looks at one of the factors that affect our environment, us. We need to start with ourselves. What are the primary values we need to develop in order to respect creation? Respect comes from being aware of the value of the object. When something is of value to us, we take care of it. We make sure that nothing, nothing bad happens to it. We protect it. We share it with others don't want to move it. And we appreciate its uniqueness. So what was asked, what then is the value of creation? I believe that the value lies in the fact that God created every living thing. I believe in God and His goodness. So every living thing that He created, He created for a good purpose. A purpose that we should acknowledge and respect. And when we respect what God created and the purpose for which He created it, we inevitably respect our own personhood because God created us too. Respecting creation also means that it was created not only for our benefit, but for our children's and our grandchildren's and so forth's benefit. As a man or woman, God made us stewards of creation, not to abuse creation, but to be a promoter, an ambassador, a surrogate, to take care of creation. It's our innate responsibility to care for creation. In summary, the primary values that I belief in our belief in God, belief that God created all living things in His goodness, belief that all living things were created for a purpose on earth. Respecting creation is respecting my personhood and belief that I was created to be a steward of creation for the current and future generation. So what can we do to be good stewards of our common home? Sonia has cited a number of great suggestions. I will share some practical applications in our day-to-day -day living. Teachers can promote them to their students depending on their grade level, level. First, reduce energy consumption. Most energy presently come from fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas. They cause air and water pollution. The greenhouse gases they emit trap heat in the atmosphere causing global warming melting ice caps and rising sea levels these in turn can cause flooding soil contamination with salt and lost habitat for fish birds and plants. Three things we can do 
are turn off unneeded lights and air dry clothes. Use more efficient lights like LED. Minimize use of equipment, especially coolers and heaters. These equipment use the most energy in households. A study shows that they use about 47% of electricity consumption. Plan our trips and limit travel. We can take longer vacations, use public transport instead of private cars. Reduce water consumption. Turn off the tap while brushing our teeth, soaping hands, or shaving. Take short showers instead of baths. Limit personal consumption. Clothing and accessories, personal care items, gadgets, furniture, food, and drinks. The more we consume, the more we contribute to greenhouse gas emissions that come from the production of goods. Prepare or order food you can finish. When we waste food, we also waste all the energy and water it takes to grow, harvest, transport, and package it. And if food goes to the landfill and rocks, it also produces greenhouse gases. Eat more vegetables, fruits, and grains. Lessen intake of meat and dairy products. The meat and dairy industries contribute much to climate change, soil, air, and water pollution. Use cloths instead of paper, like tote bags for shopping, especially for groceries. Hand towels rather than paper towels. Cloth napkins and handkerchiefs instead of tissue paper. Utilize reusable rather than disposable plates and utensils. If unavoidable, use eco-friendly supplies, like those made from cornstarch. Plastic and styrofoam items take decades to decompose, are hard to recycle, and contain chemicals hazardous to our health. Teachers can schedule field trips for students to appreciate nature such as visits to butterfly farms, zoos, forests, and eco parks like La Mesa Dam. Lastly, teachers can garden with their students or let them plant as a homework. Students will learn new skills, know more about science, weather, and nature, eat healthier, and gain confidence in seeing a plant bloom and engaging in what they might think as only for adults. Like this web, nothing exists in isolation. We live in a world where we are connected with other people, socially, politically, economically, and environmentally. Connections in nature are the very basis of our existence as living creatures on this earth. Our job as stewards is to preserve these connections. We are affecting these connections upon which all life depends, and we have it in our power to avoid its destruction. Should you uh, want to know more about what we have been discussing, um, we, there are some suggested resources that we placed here. Uh, Laudato Si, which is the 
papal encyclical of Pope Francis on the environment, on taking care of our common home. And um, the organization that um, um, takes this Laudato Si um, in, into action, which is the Global Catholic Climate Movement. And to end our short presentation, we'd like to end with a song. We invite you to watch and listen to our closing song, uh, Web of Life by Sister Bubbles, Bandoho, and the Jesuit Music Ministry.
I hope the presentation of Miss Jane and Miss Rory has helped us become more mindful of what we consume and how we dispose of these. The earth may be giving, but it also has its limits. Being more aware of this helps us become more conscious with our daily actions because no matter how big or small, this can help save the environment. Speaking of our contributions, our guest, our next guest speaker, Renee Ann Legata, is a second year student of Miriam College from the Environmental Planning and Management Program. She is based in Sorsogon. She will take us on an adventure while talking about her advocacy to save the mangrove forest. Let's now listen to Renee as she shares with us ways to save the mangroves of Sorsogon. We are visiting a mangrove forest situated in the municipality of Preto Diaz in the province of Sorsogon. This is my province found in the tip of Luzon. So ano pa? Tara! Tara! our destination. Do you know that mangroves are essential if we want to protect our environment? These trees are considered to be natural coastal barriers because they act as defense against storm surge and floods. Mangrove systems support a wide range of organisms perform a variety of useful ecological, biophysical, and socioeconomic functions and are the source of a multitude of benefits to coastal population. They are also used in making fish traps, boats, and houses. Here in Preto Diaz, they also sell local products made by several people from different places in the province of Sorsogon. Before we start this adventure, we need to log in first to their guest book. Don't forget to wear your vests.
Dadaan na namin sila. Hi guys! Hello! Hi! Hi guys! Kuya! Kuya Red! Hello! Mag-hi ka kuya! Sinasabi ko! Ayan! Very good! Pick a proper gill from the mangrove tree. Tapos parang may brown brown na siya. So malalaman mo if ready na talaga siya ito next. sa malapit na tayo sa tunnel dahil lahat ng nakikita niyo dyan ay mangrove tree dito sa Mangrove trees. So, ang ganitong klase ng 
mangrove tree ay tinatawag nila or parang commonly known as bakawang lalaki. Then, ang mga ganitong ano naman, itong uri ng bakawan, ito yung common dito ay tinatawag nilang bakawang bato. So, yun. May iba-ibang klasik dito sa bato dito. Thank you, Kuyas! We had an interview with the locals to know more about the mangrove sanctuary. Well, basically the, the benefits or the impact that the community is receiving is the abundance of the resources particularly the coastal resources available in this place like the seashells, the fishes, the different mangrove species we have and of course the ecological functions that it performs so malaking tulong talaga itong, itong na-establish na reforestation project ng DNR Simula ito ng 1990s, early 1990s. With the advent of the Coastal Environmental Program ng DNR under Secretary Alcaladen. Hindi yung Secretary. He's from UP Marine Science. So, naging hindi yung Secretary. So, one of the priority programs is of course the Coastal Environmental Program. And there is leadership. So, dito na-realize yung Itong ano, current situation ng 1990s, yung course yung usual ano, usual kaso ng nandiyan yung charcoal making or illegal yan ha, kasi mangrove is banned species yan no cutting since 1975 under the PD705 so yun na sustain yung ano yung project hanggang na convert natin yung pinakamaganda dito yung value system yung na na ano na bago natin sa mga tao kasi noon talaga very dependent sila sa mangrove ang alam nila pag mangrove kulini so yun nagawa natin na pangalagaan ito so mas lumawak yung economic base ng mga local fishers as you will know, yung PO natin dito, 26 years in existence na. And still, still very strong. So, nakita natin dito yung self-sufficiency ng mga POs natin na ginagawa, yung people's organization. Na, sa akin naman ang pananaw, yun ang dapat ma-achieve ng bawat PO na kinikreate natin. So, siguro yung ano natin, yung paluwakin pa natin yung mga pag-organisan ng mga similar people's organizations especially in the upland areas kasi very effective yung partnership ng tao mismo and with the government so napakalaki yung tulong ng, ng programa nito sa ano sa and especially sa LGU kasi nagiging mas nakikilala yung LGU dito so mga indirect impact na yun ng pangangalaga natin sa kabakawanan natin Siguro, intensify yung, ano, yung sa forest protection and of course yung sa monitoring of the with, ano, not only the vegetation but of course the wildlife. Itong ginagawa namin ngayon yung annual water birds ano, inventory, monitoring. So yun yung ginagawa namin balik kami sa Cuban, same area, mangrove area and we proceeded in this case. Uh, 
<laughs> so unang una talaga ang ano natin yung ano palakasin natin yung resource base kasi yun ang magsusustain sa economic activities ng bawat community so yung biodiversity conservation is very important walang malakas na ekonomiya na bagsak ang biodiversity so siya ang source ng ng resources raw materials to few will be ano the factories the industries across the nation or in the countryside hindi dahil siguro sa DNR wala yung Seaman Corps. Ang Seaman Corps isang people's organization dito sa sa Puerto Diaz na nabuo siya, nagumpisa sa dalawang barangay. Barangay Diamante and Barangay Forlas. At um, noong una, 27 lang yung member namin, nagkataon na nagkaroon ng expansion yung programa ng DNR uh, from 2 barangay to 11 o sa barangay ng Puerto Diaz. From 27 members, umabot na kami ng 105 members. Kaya, uh, sa lahat ng programa ng national government, ng local government unit, na patungkol sa environment, ay kami ay laging kasama. Pag environment ang pinag-uusapan, coastal cleanup, replanting, laging kasama ang team ngayon dyan. Ilang mas din kayo hindi ko hinahangad na yumaman yung pito. Ang gusto ko lang madagda yung yung, um, yung baga kinikita ng tao para sa kanilang pagkita. When visiting places like this, we need to keep in mind these things. First is the rule of leaving no trees camping. Take nothing but pictures. Leave nothing but footprints. And kill nothing but time. Second is we need to dispose our trash properly. Thank you so much for your support. We should be grateful and courteous to the people in the place. We also need to respect the organisms in the place by being cautious of our actions. Lastly, we need to take care of our valuable things and ourselves in order to make the experience an unforgettable one. As a student, it is easier to learn if you are one with nature. You will experience its beauty and the things it can offer. With the current situation, the simple act of watching this kind of video could really enhance our minds and prepare us if we will visit a site like the Mangrove Sanctuary. It is important then that as we continue learning, our teachers will enable us to explore and immerse into experiences that will allow us to make active observations, think critically, and draw up conclusions. We do not even need to be in the place physically, although it is more beneficial to be in the place of action, so to speak. But exposing the students to documentaries or even short films will allow them to experience vicariously concepts and ideas about what they need to learn. And it is actually more fun. Human activities are altering both the aim and order of ecosystems. The prevailing exploitation of the natural resources and the population tend to make the environment at risk. This trip made me realize that it is easier to protect and conserve our environment than to fix them. 
we should learn how to prevent these things from happening by creating a sustainable lifestyle and being mindful of our actions. With the emerging adversities in our environment, we cannot afford to lose again an immense and relevant natural resource that sustains coastal and marine ecosystems. In Denis's video, we gain more understanding on the importance of mangroves to the environmental health of our waters. Can you imagine all the species that rely on mangroves? Wow, that was really an eye-opener for me and I hope this creates more appreciation and awareness for us so that the next time we visit a place with mangroves, we are more careful not to harm the forest. It is really so inspiring to see our young leaders pave the way towards becoming a more caring and woke community for the environment. Thank you, Rini, for taking the lead. As we gain more appreciation for what's being done in the cities and urban areas, let us now listen in to people from all over the world, from different walks of life, who are taking a stand and making their voices heard to forever banning nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons is one of the most inhumane weapons ever invented. The use of nuclear weapons go against the very root of our spiritual beliefs, respect for human life and creation. These weapons are so powerful that they can destroy planet Earth and the rest of creation. The effects of nuclear weapons are catastrophic and therefore unacceptable. The movement to ban the weapon was started by a group of physicians in 2007 and soon people from all walks of life came together to support this cause. The group is now called ICANN or the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. In 2017, ICANN was presented the year's Nobel Peace Prize in Oslo, Norway in recognition of the work to draw attention to the catastrophic humanitarian consequences of any use of nuclear weapons. To date, there are 86 states who have signed, including the Philippines, and 51 states who have ratified. Let us now listen to our international campaigners to gain more awareness about what inspires them to take action towards a world free from nukes. Nuclear weapons are the worst weapon ever created. They're designed to indiscriminately kill thousands and millions of people in a flash. But we can stop that from happening. As health professional, it's my professional responsibility not just to try and relieve suffering and, and, and cure illness, but also to prevent illness where that's possible, particularly in cases where there's no effective cure. For nuclear war, there is no cure. A single nuclear weapon on a city would produce more casualties than all of the health services combined in the world would be able to manage. So prevention is the only answer. The battle against nuclear weapons is important to me um, as an individual and someone who be, is a faith person. And I believe in the sanctity of life and for me the, the existence of nuclear weapons is just a threat to human life and also the environment. I mean it just it requires the mistake of one individual for whatever reason and you know the whole earth is is gone in just a few seconds battle against nuclear weapons is very important because i'm from japan and for us japanese the memory of hiroshima and nagasaki 
is very, very important. Even today, more than 100,000 survivors are living from Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and today they are suffering from diseases caused by atomic bombings. I was just 13 years old girl when the United States dropped the first atomic bomb on my city of Hiroshima. I remember that morning vividly. I speak as a member of the family of Hibakusha. Those of us who survived the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. For more than seven decades, we have been working hard for the total abolition of nuclear weapons. We have stood in solidarity with those harmed by the production and testing of these horrific weapons around the world. We are not content to be victims. We refuse to wait for a fiery end or to slow poisoning of our world. We refuse to sit idly in terror. We rose up. We shared our stories of survival. We said, nuclear weapons and humanities cannot coexist. There's a notion that it will be a little bit like Hiroshima, perhaps. But in fact, if nuclear weapons are used again, the consequences will be many, many, many times worse than Hiroshima. If we were to have even a limited nuclear war, as might take place between India and Pakistan, not only could as many as 20 million people die directly from the effects of these weapons in India and Pakistan, but the fires caused by these explosions would cause climate disruption across the entire planet. It would cause a catastrophic decline in food production, and it would trigger a worldwide famine that could kill up to two billion people. Working against nuclear weapons is really important to me because I see them as one of the big symbols of global injustice and of patriarchal, racist, militarist power. I've dedicated my life to fighting against these structures of power and against weapons and war, and I think that eliminating nuclear weapons is crucial for the survival of humanity, but also for us to be able to overcome other obstacles that we face collectively as a human species. Well, I can will succeed because uh, they. Well, I can has the best campaigners ever, and uh, I think we we fight against something very uh, important, and we actually are succeeding. We have a treaty banning uh, nuclear weapons. One of the strengths of ICANN is to uh, have campaigners in different regions, uh, with different perspectives, uh, different paradigms to 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 improve our action. Uh, and our actions reflect also the diversity of campaign. The, the many campaigners that we have in different regions uh, give inputs, relevant inputs to campaign and how to face the challenge that we've, we, we had in the past and also, well, all the, the work that we will have from now. I know ICANN's going to succeed because we have the right people, we have the right message, and we have the enthusiasm and we're on the right side of history. Nuclear weapons are really scary, and they feel disempowering. The greatest thing about this campaign is that it's just ordinary people doing stuff, and everybody can be part of it. Please join us, help us. Check out the website, nuclearband.org. We hope that today's episode has helped you understand that we have the power within our hands to create a better environment, a better world for our generation and those to come. May we continue to strive to live out our mission as stewards of God's creation. Once again, this is Mirma Tico Ortiz from Miriam College. Thank you for tuning in here at our sacred space, our peaceful classroom.